welcome back to another self-taught guitar review. This time it is Indio by Mono Price, retro classic electric guitar with gig bag. Weird by in the middle of the name there, but it's kind of like it's being introduced to you. It's like, this is Indio. Okay, we do have a gig bag and it comes with, and I was very, very pleasantly surprised. This is a real gig bag. It has real cushiness to it. Logo on the front. It isn't just like a fabric bag that covers your guitar from place to place. This guitar is advertised as being very upgradable. Of course, all guitars are. Um, it is a three-piece basswood body. Very, very well done, actually. And um, you can obviously route out spaces for humbuckers if you want, but it doesn't come pre-routed like that. I was not expecting much from a $100 guitar. I was thinking probably like a tennis racket with guitar strings on it, but I was very pleasantly surprised that this is indeed a real guitar for $100. You can see the uh, bright yellow sunburst there through the paper, which is always a good sign that they take care in their finishes, which they absolutely do. This color is actually no longer available on the Monoprice site. Um, Still listed, though, for $100 on the Monoprice site. It's gone up about $15 on Amazon. Um, that is paper there that is supposed to protect the neck from packing stuff, I believe, because it didn't work. <laughs> There's tons of packing stuff all over the guitar. But that's okay. Guitar came in great shape and looks great. It has a very, very pretty sunburst there. You can see that it's a narrow band of cherry that goes around leading into that yellow. It's not my preferred style, which is more of a natural kind of hand done gradient. This kind of looks machined. I'm not sure how they did it. it doesn't look awful. Everyone, has, a lot of people like this. Gibson does this often with a, a lot of different guitars. They have a more narrow kind of band of cherry, brighter center. Really beautiful colors, really beautifully finished. You know, it's different strokes for different folks. This is the rosewood fingerboard with very unfinished frets. That's just packing stuff there on the front. It's not dings in the finish or anything. Um, all this stuff comes off. Plastic nut. You have a pretty standard uh, Fender style headstock here with kind of a Nike swoosh there at the bottom. Nickel uh, string trees and tuning machines. Okay, we have a satin urethane finish here on the neck. That is just a, a mark. That's not actually anything. I thought that was like a ding in the finish. It's not all that comes off. Made in China, obviously. The company's out of Brea, California, but made in China. Yep, we can see that the gig bag is actual cushiony gig bag. There's cushiony goodness in there. And I'm really surprised they're able to get us to that to us. Not cushiony, however, are these frets. These are very, very sharp frets. Unfinished and not good for beginners, even though this guitar is marketed to beginners. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, you're going to definitely need to get it crowned before you play it. And we have a six saddle flat style telly bridge. A lot of people like the ashtray style. A lot of people like three saddles instead of six, although six are kind of in vogue now, so it depends on if you're an old school purist or not. It doesn't really affect the sound, it's just a style choice, and this is what they went with. We have two standard knobs, tone and volume, and a three-way switch. And other than that, it's a pretty standard, basic guitar for $100, but it's a real guitar. Very, very lightweight, basswood body. Those are the specs, now let's hear the tones.
Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Andy here with a brand new electric guitar. This time it is the Monoprice Indio Classic Electric Retro Guitar. Classic Retro Electric Guitar. I don't know. It's a lengthy name. Like all cheap guitars, this is a $100 guitar. It was when I purchased it. Generally when you're buying a cheap guitar, look for names that are, you know, like a paragraph long at least. And generally there's like a serial number in there. Um, but this one is marketed and designed for newer guitar players. It's just called the classic electric guitar. It's not called a Telecaster or T-style guitar, even though that's clearly what it is. And yet this guitar has the sharpest frets I have ever touched, okay? They are shards of metal sticking out of the rosewood fingerboard. If you're getting this, especially for somebody who's younger, if you're playing it and you don't want to cut your hands, you're going to need to bring this to a, a guitar person tech, luthier, to have it set up. Okay, first up, just some stats. We have a basswood body with a sunburst finish on it. You can tell it's the kind of narrow band sunburst. We'll talk about that in a minute. We have single coil ceramic pickups. People don't always love ceramic pickups. Um, they can be good, they can be bad, in my opinion. They are not as good as Alnico, but especially for a cheaper guitar, that's okay. A lot of people have issues with basswood because they think it's a cheaper tone wood. Um, Sir guitars are often made out of basswood. Joe Satriani's guitars can be made out of basswood. Petrucci, I know, has put, made some guitars with basswood. Basswood's a fine material. I've really enjoyed playing this guitar, actually. And one of the reasons is because it's such a light material. It just, you want to pick it up. This is not a chambered guitar, and it is lighter than my chambered mahogany Telecaster, believe it or not. This is just a very open, porous wood. Very light in color, very light in weight, too. That's a really good thing. I think it sounds like ash and alder. Again, tone wood is a hotly contested debate within the community of guitar players, as hotly as we contest anything, which is not very hotly because we're so relaxed from all the guitar playing. Check out Warmless YouTube page for differences in tone wood. I've talked about this before, but they put the same guitar on three different bodies and let you hear just the difference between ash, alder, mahogany. I think there's a difference, others do not. I think that bass wood sounds like Ash and Alder, which I think actually sound pretty similar. Brighter, lighter tone, more of a fun, funky country, bluegrassy style tone. It's got a great neck, maple neck, rosewood fingerboard, um, satin urethane finish here on the neck, exactly what everybody's wanting now, smooth, quick. The whole polyurethane finish thing is kind of going away, I think, slowly but surely. Standard pick guard, standard three-way switch. Uh, volume, tone, these knobs are a little bit off kilter so they kind of dip and rise when you spin them. Um, something easily dealt with by your guitar person again. So let's talk about the sunburst. I love a sunburst, I love any kind of finish that allows the wood to shine and kind of uh, showcases the grain of the wood as a sunburst does. And you can see here that it's a very narrow band of cherry between the black and the lighter colors here in yellow as we get to the center of the guitar. A lot of people like that. Gibson famously does their um, acoustics in that style. They'll have like kind of a black top and then the body bottom will branch out and you get this thinnish kind of even line around of black with some cherry moving into the center. This is not my preferred style of sunburst. I know there are huger problems in the world than not having your ideal style of sunburst on a cheap guitar. But this has been vexing me deeply. I will show you my chosen sunburst style. This is my Fender Strat. It is 1997, and it was finished by Fender Company. And you can see, and Fender has done these types of finishes before, but you can see to me it looks like a human did it, right? It looks, you have so much more cherry, and the black goes into the cherry, into the kind of yellowish, orangish. It's not as white, it's faded also, because it's been around for 20 years. Um, but it is a more gradual color gradient. It looks to me like a person did. This to me looks like a machine did it. It's so perfect around the edge of the guitar. So, you know, different strokes for different folks. Some people really like this look and don't like this look. I like this look more than this look. Not a huge deal, certainly not a deal breaker, but something I always want to mention, whenever I see a sunburst, all sunbursts are not equal. All sunbursts are not made the same. Some are good, some are bad. The dots are off kilter. You can see down here that they dip in and then kind of come up a little bit. There's a slight indentation in this one. Not a huge deal, but I often find that the little things when they put together, especially cheaper guitars, will indicate if they've done other things incorrectly too. Like the green M&M's thing, I've talked about that in other videos. Google green M&M's and Van Halen. 
Okay, this is kind of like the green M&Ms. If the dots are off a little bit, sometimes that means they had some sloppy workmanship. I can see no other sloppy workmanship here. Generally stays in tune pretty well. This E loves to jump out of tune. These are pretty mediocre tuning machines, as are on, on all uh, cheaper guitars, so I'd recommend upgrading these if you want to record or play anything with it. Great sound, even for these ceramic uh, single coils. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. Again, even though I'm cutting up, I have all these little micro abrasions on my hands now from these frets. This is a single coil guitar, so it will not handle distortion quite as well, um, obviously, as like a humbucker uh, style guitar. A lot of people will take the single coil out of the neck and replace it with a humbucker. In fact, the literature for this site, they actually say, upgrade it as much as you want, right? Which is every guitar, you can upgrade as much as you want. So I would probably switch this out for something else, unless you just love a really good clean sound. It has a nice, warm, wide kind of deeper sound, but it is a single coil uh, guitar, and they are ceramic, and they do not handle 60 cycle hum, as well as other guitars. So if you're playing a lot of metal, if you're playing a lot of distortion, that's gonna be an issue for you. You might wanna change the pickups. The other thing I will mention is that this does have a standard tele neck profile, the numbers of which I will put right there, um, which is thicker and wider than most profiles that people like, especially now as people are getting into shreddiness more and more and more. This is a guitar that I love because it, you can jump into strumming. You can just do a sing-along song with people or whatever, and then you can go back to soloing. I love the versatility of the tele neck. It's kind of like a Goldilocks thickness between the very thickest and the very thinnest. I think it really finds a great uh, kind of middle ground. And especially if you have bigger hands, it just feels good because you don't feel like your hands are kind of enveloping the whole, they have to like curl back down to make the chords. Um, so I love a telly neck. Again, this is a guitar that was made by people who like tellies and like to make tellies. It seems, even though it's incredibly cheap, I think they did a very, very good job. I also mentioned that the side of the guitar is rounded off. A lot of telly people love a, like a straight, chunky edge to their guitar. I don't know if that makes sense. Here is my warmth telly. You can just see, I just had it just, there's no contours, no belly cut, nothing, okay? A lot of people love the big, chunky aspect of a, of a telly. And this guitar, they round off the sides a little bit, so it doesn't have that feel. My guess is they did it so it would be more comfortable on people's laps, especially on, you know, beginners' laps or maybe kids, but they didn't, they didn't uh, smooth over the fret, so it feels great on your lap, but you're cutting your hands up as you're playing it. No offense to Mono Price, I'm not picking a fight with them, they seem like a pretty good company. The headstock is kind of a Fender style with like a Nike swoosh in it. Um, I hated it when I first saw it. It's kind of grown on me, actually, I don't, I don't mind it now. The logo is just the word Indio in like bold lettering, which also kind of just seems lazy. It's weird, it's like there's lazy aspects of this guitar and yet it is a really fun, good guitar to play. I do want to talk about the price. It is a $100 guitar, it's a $115 guitar now. Um, it's around Christmas time, so it probably uh, price went up. On their website, they've said they've eliminated entire layers of markup within their supply chain, which I believe means, and I, I'm a dumb guitar player, so I don't understand a lot of the corporate speak, but it seems to me like they're saying they've taken out a bunch of middlemen and so they can get us the product for $100, which I have no reason to doubt. Okay, it's made in China. They seem like a, a perfectly fine, reputable company. Okay, $100 is just an unfair challenge for other guitar companies to meet. So the fact that other guitar companies can't put out a, a product like this, especially one with a gig bag. I haven't mentioned the gig bag. Guys, it's 100 bucks, and they send you a gig bag. This is foam in it. This is like an actual gig bag. I don't, this is like the first gig bag I've ever owned. They came free with a $100 Telecaster. Okay, other companies cannot keep up with that kind of deal. Maybe it's a loss leader for them. Monoprice sells a wide array, array. I'm not doing a commercial for them, but they send a whole, sell a whole bunch of different electronic stuff. So maybe they put this out there to get their name out there. I don't know, possibly. Either way, it is kind of an unfair price because it's so cheap and you get actually a guitar for it. I ordered this thinking, oh, I'm gonna get a, you know, an easy bake oven in the mail. And they sent me this, and it's an actual guitar, and it's an actual Telecaster that I really like playing. If you love Telecasters, and you love this look, and you don't have a whole lot of money to spend, I'd say grab this guitar. Um, you, can, you can probably deal with all the issues for it and make it like a gig-ready, recording-ready guitar 
for another hundred bucks. It's probably, you know, replace the pickups if you want. I actually like the ceramic uh, bridge pickup here. I love the bounciness of a tally bridge pickup anyway, but this ceramic isn't terrible. Um, I would replace the neck. I'd probably replace both of them, especially if I'm going to record or gig. Deal with the frets, deal with the knobs, which are a little off kilter, upgrade. The tuning machines, I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 11. I think it loses points for the frets, especially as it markets itself to newer players. You lose a few points for the dots not being exactly in line. Okay, it is largely intonated out of the box, not perfectly, but pretty well. Um, so it's a good grade. It's hard to break 8 out of 11 with me. So be happy, Mono Price, that you got this, even with the frets that hurt my hands. Okay, I do recommend this guitar for people who want to do some bluesy rock style stuff. I mean, you can play anything you want on the Telecaster. You can play uh, all the metal all day you want on it. You just have to have the right pickups. These pick up a lot of these pick up a lot of sickle sixty. These, these pick up a lot of sickle cell anemia and sixty cycle hum. So it's a two pronged thing. That I've had a lot of fun playing this guitar. I actually think you would too. Uh, just with the fair warnings about the little caveats about it. I give it a 7.5. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Check out my channel for more guitar reviews, gear reviews, backing tracks if you love to just play along to stuff, guitar lessons, funny things, all things self-taught guitar. And until next time, keep playing.